Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Lenny here. Uh, We have the uh, pleasure of having Christian here. How are you doing, my brother? Doing well, thank you. How are you, Austin? Doing good, my man. First of all, love the map in the background. That's like my dream, the travel, so it's perfect. Um, We're going to get into your story. We've talked briefly. Um, We got introduced by Diego Corza, one of my good friends, one of your good friends. Uh, You do a couple different things, definitely the Amazon stuff you're teaching them. So it's a lot of interesting stuff for my guests. And, you know, I'll let you start your story wherever kind of you want to, and we can kind of go from there. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for that invite. And I love the map as well, because I love traveling. So I've been to about 25 countries in the past three to four years. And that is all thank you to making money online. I've been doing e-commerce for the past seven years. Um, Since I was 23 years old, now I just turned 30. I've been doing e-commerce. I've been teaching for the past year, and I also do a few more things. You know, I do credit repair. I do coaching. I also, I'm getting into real estate. So everything started back in 2013 because I enjoyed, I enlisted in the military. So since I enlisted, I didn't really like people telling me what to do all day, every single day, what time to wake up, what time to go to sleep, you know, what time I had to eat, what time I had to go to the bathroom. So I decided that when I was going to get out of boot camp, I was going to be my own boss and I was going to be making money online and to do whatever I wanted to do. And since I'm in that reserve, I only work one week in a month with the Air Force and the remaining 28 days out of the month, I do whatever I want to do. And since then, that's, that's what I've been doing for the past seven years. But coming here to the United States, I, come, I came here when I was 13 years old. I didn't know how to speak English. I didn't come with my parents. I came to my aunt and my uncle's house. And I had a little rough start because I was scared. I came from a little town where there was no traffic lights. It was mostly motorcycles surrounded by mountains. So coming to a big city, going in the highway at 60 miles per hour, which is like 100 kilometers per hour, I thought we were like racing, right? And then I came to my aunt's house. They opened the garage door with a clicker. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And so everything was brand new to me when I came here. Um, I remember bringing some board games because I thought I was going to play with my neighbor. And I never got to meet my neighbor. It it was just a whole culture. How old were you? I was 13. I was 13 13 years years old. And you saw a garage door clicker. And you 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 were to the moon. Yeah. Yeah, it was a whole new world to me. And I was like, wow, I was really into cars back then, too. And I would just see like a BMW. And I was like, oh, my God, it's a BMW. It was just a huge experience, a life changing experience. Um, The first day I went to school, I came back home crying because I saw those, uh, the kids with the mohawk and the purple hair and the spike bracelets. And I just never thought that someone would like dye their hair purple, right? So it was just everything was brand new to me um i didn't have my parents so i was a little bit um sad because of that and you know throughout the years i became more independent and on my senior year my my aunt and my uncle lost their house because of the the market crashed back in 07 or 08 so then my uncle went to texas to get a different job me and my aunt stayed here in sacramento and she had three kids, so it was her kids, myself, and my aunt in one single bedroom apartment. Uh, therefore, I had to start working. Uh, my first job was delivering newspapers every single day from 2 to 5 in the morning while I was in high school. Then I, I graduated high school. I wanted to go to college, and I did go to a community college, Sacramento City College. Um, I got a certificate in aircraft maintenance. Then I went to took the FAA exam, the Federal Aviation Administration exam. And so I wasn't a citizen. I wasn't able to take that exam. Therefore, I felt like I went to school, but I couldn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish, which was to work on planes. And 
I didn't give up, you know, uh, years passed. I finally got my green card. And once I got my green card, I decided to enlist in the military. Once I enlisted, I wanted to work on planes. But then again, I wasn't, I wasn't a citizen, so I wasn't able to work on planes either. And the closest that I got to the planes was to load them. So that's currently what I do. I'm an inspector and I load the planes that, that go to different bases. And my, my biggest dream was to become a pilot so that I could travel around the world. And then I realized that I didn't have to be a pilot to do that. I just needed money to do that. So when I started making money online, you know, I, I remember breaking in like $3,000 in one single month. I was like, wow, I, if I can do this for the next three to four months in a row, I'm just going to start traveling. And I did. I, I, I did a little bit over 3000 in four consecutive months. And I was like, all right, it's time to start traveling. And all I do is I carry my laptop around the world with me. I carry a hotspot. And that's, that's how I make money. Yeah. Amazing. And we're going to, and we're going to get into all that. And just like Diego blown away again by the resilience and, you know, Somebody asked me the other day, have you met any successful people that haven't had it hard when they started? And right. And no, the, question is, the question is no, but it's interesting, right? You're the third person I've talked to in the, in the span of two weeks that their parents are, are immigrants and, and live somewhere else and then sent them to America. And there's almost a, a sense of like handling your own your own shit or like, like dealing with yourself or like growing up quicker that gives you this level of like confidence that you can accomplish things sooner than I think other people, do you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. I can. Yeah. Agree yeah. And so, you know, um, we'll, we'll spend the last pack of the thing talking about how you can make money online, but I'm interested to think like, what did you tell yourself when you couldn't reach the goals that you wanted to, and you went to all the school, how did you stay so positive and how did you keep going? What, what did you tell yourself? Mm -hmm. I knew there were moments and I had those moments where I wanted to give up, but then I also, I would always think if someone else can make it, why not me? Like what's the difference? Right. And I, I started reading books about self-improvement books and motivational books. And I would watch a lot of YouTube podcasts um, just trying to be motivated, stay positive. And I realized that being here, I had the opportunities that everyone else had as well. My, my only holdback was my, my documents, Ryan. But once I got my, my green card, my citizenship, I, I felt unstoppable. I felt like I can do literally everything that I wanted to do. And obviously I had my ups and downs. But I mean, thanks to the internet, I was able to make money and then I remember when I was making kind of a few hundred bucks online, I still had a job. And then when I started making a little bit more than that, I realized that if I focus my time full time into one thing, I will be successful. So I did that. And then someone told me that I can hire people in a different country to work for my online business. And once I did that, my business doubled in sales. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. If I can hire one and double, what if I hire two? Is it going to triple? So I did. And yeah, I got to a point where I had about six members working from the laptop in the Philippines on my online business. And I, I actually went to the Philippines as well. And I got to meet them, took their hand, took them out. We went to a water park. We went to eat. We went to karaoke night. It was, it was just amazing. But I definitely had those moments where I wanted to give up. Um, I think my biggest, my biggest thought was that if someone else can do it, I can do it as well. And just mm -hmm. reading those books, listening to those motivational speakers, it helped a lot. And something I want to touch on is there's a lot of people in VAs now, especially with what's happening in the United States and what's going on, VAs are everywhere, right? We're just working remotely and stuff, but this is a different type of VA. And they say, well, you're taking advantage of whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, you hear people say that. But I would imagine that the people that work for you are beyond grateful to have the opportunity to work on this business with you, right? And then you met them in person. Most definitely. And I also thought the same thing. I was like, wow, how can they live with $400 a month? But then when I flew there and meet them, we went out to eat. It was about eight of us. And the bill was like $50 for eight people. So 
then I started talking to my, my closest employee. He became my manager. And I told him, hey, how much is $400 a year? And he's like, Christian, this is really good money. This is what a nurse makes a month. So we're wow. making the salary of a nurse working from home. And eventually, like about two years after, my, my main manager, he bought a house. And <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah, he, he sent me a picture of like a big key with his family. And he's like, yo, Christian, this is thanks to you. No, yeah. That's the, there's no better feeling. But what I love about it most is you're giving them a gift with great employment that they can do from home, but they're also giving you a gift of time. Mm -hmm. That allows you to go focus on other things and travel and stuff. And I would imagine that relationship is very symbiotic because you get what you want. They get what they want and the business still thrives. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And go ahead. No, I said, I, like I thought about creating different type of businesses, like maybe a physical location for a different, I thought about doing insurance as well, but I realized that if I were to open up an, an office or a local business, I will be working for that specific business and not the business working for me. So I didn't want to create my lifestyle around the business. I wanted a business around my own lifestyle, which is having that free time. Dude, and dude you are not going to believe this. That is my tagline. I, said, I say that on every podcast I've been on. The problem yeah. with everybody is they create a business and then wrap their lifestyle around it instead of building a lifestyle and wrapping their business around it. That's yes. the key. It's so That's funny it. that you say that. I've never heard anybody else say that to me. So I love right. this. I'm super excited. So, yeah. so, you know, as you continue to grow, like, and what got you interested in the real estate aspect now, as you continue to grow your businesses? I believe it was um, Robert Kiyosaki. You know, I, I read a lot of his books and I see that, his biggest investment is, is real estate. And I just got into the market of uh, looking around about real estate. And eventually, my goal is to own properties around the world. I'm almost done building a, a multifamily in Colombia, in the small town that I grew up. Mm -hmm. And that also got me excited because I employed a ton of people during that construction. And I want to get a duplex here. I want to get a small, maybe studio in Mexico by the water, in Europe. Everywhere I, I want to travel to, I want to own a piece of land. That's my goal. That's my ultimate, I made a goal. And obviously I want to do it for my family. You know, I heard that quote that said that your kids cannot take over your job, but they can take over your business and they can also take over your properties, right? So mm -hmm. why, why work a job when you can create a business? 100%, and I love that. And so, you know, was there any stress? I mean, or I guess you're from there, so not so much, but was there a stress of building uh, something outside of... Uh, you know, the country in Colombia? Mm -hmm. Not as much because my whole family is still there. Like my mom, my dad, my brother, my grandma, they're all in the same town where I grew up. So I was lucky enough that my main responsibility is to send them money and they take care of all the employees in the construction. I also got to work with the architect. We were getting together some Zoom calls to design the property. So that, that was an, an amazing feeling to be able to design what I wanted to do. And what's the, what's the use of the building there? So it's a three-story building. Uh, the first two stories are rented already, and I'm finishing up the third story, which is mine. And it's only like one room, one office, and then everything else is like a big balcony surrounded by mountains. And, and I just want to chill there. want to put a hammock and relax. And, and I'm invited, right? Yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Dude, I've, heard, like, I've heard amazing things about Cartagena. Like, yeah. Amazing. So what city yeah. is it in in Colombia? Uh, it's called Tarki. Like I said, it's a tiny town. It's it's far from Cartagena, mm -hmm. but I mean, right now with planes, you can get anywhere in a few hours. And I I I myself is am interested in maybe uh, owning property in Costa Rica, Italy, everywhere around too. And I'm looking. You know, I'm I'm cool with building a process like that. There's not technically are there loans, or did you have to fund everything uh, cash? There are loans. But because of when you convert the currency, it's like a dollar equals three times more over there. Mm -hmm. I was able to just kind of fund it myself. So I didn't have to worry about getting a loan with the bank. How long is the process of the build? It's been about 11 months. So I would say close to, I would say in the next two to three weeks, I should be done. And you funded that all from your e-commerce business? 
Mm-hmm. I funded it all with my e-commerce business. That you're not technically working on. I mean, not, yeah, I work, I work maybe half an hour a day, a couple hours a week, just making payments and collecting the money from Amazon. And so I want to I wanna unpack this because you mentioned it to me. I, I know Diego's getting into it. I'm not 100% mm-hmm. familiar with how it works. A lot of my audience are younger guys getting into the business that maybe are real estate agents or whatever they are. Mm-hmm. Kind of walk us through a typical, you know, what you can share training on what you do and how you make money. Maybe this could be a side hustle for a lot of real estate investors or agents to make some money on the side. Yes, most definitely. So it's e-commerce and there is a lot of different aspects of e-commerce. What I focus on is drop shipping and drop shipping is basically selling something that you don't physically have. You literally just copy and paste pictures from one site to Amazon or to eBay or even to Facebook marketplace. And you copy and paste pictures and descriptions. When a customer buys from you, from your store, then you go to the supplier and buy that specific item and have it shipped to the customer. So you're the middleman, 100% you're the middleman, and the profit is about eight to 10% on each sale. And the best part is that you don't have to worry about inventory, warehouse, shipping, packaging, none of that. All you have to do is place the order. And also the best part is that you're using the customer's money to place that order. So, yeah, you do have to pay some fees. Like with Amazon, you pay 15% fee. Right now with Facebook Marketplace, you only pay 5% fee. With eBay, you pay like 8.3% uh, fee. But you're still making about 10%. So if you sell you know, $20,000 a month, which is pretty doable, you're already making about $2,000. That's, that's cash flow. That's like only in a couple of... Uh, single family homes right and, and if i'm not mistaken yeah and if i'm not mistaken can't you take out credit cards use the credit cards to buy it then you get cash back and points off the credit card so you're really collecting money almost twice yes exactly so i have about six to seven different ways that you can money make money selling a single product um, mm-hmm. and i can explain them real quick so the first way is obviously the the markup right the spread i buy for 100 i sell it for 120 so I have the spread. Then I also have using um, buying gift cards. So if you go to cardcookie.com, you can buy some gift cards at a discounted price, usually four to five percent. So let's say a hundred dollars, right? Instead of being a hundred, I only pay ninety-five bucks. So I'm already making five dollars. The other thing is that I can pay to I can pay for that gift card with a credit card that can give me two percent cash back. So now I made two dollars, right? So two from cashback, five from buying the gift card, that's already $7. Uh, plus the spread that I have, let's say just another dollar or because after paying fees, so you're already, you're already at $8. And I get my items from Home Depot. They're locally here in the state. So they also offer a 90-day price match on their price, on their items. So if you buy something today for 100 and then during... Thanksgiving goes on sale for $90, you're going to get an extra $10 gift card there because the price changed. So that's another, let's say 1%. So that's why um, your profit is about 10% on all the sales. Plus you can also combine it with coupons. So you can go on eBay, buy a Home Depot coupon for $3 and it gives you $20 off. Mm -hmm. So it's just, just six to seven different ways that you can make money with one single product. And all I think about, (laughs) all I think about with this is how much ways there is available to make money and how much people bitch and moan that there's not opportunities available. Right. Right. I mean, literally everything that you want to do and and what do you say to somebody? Because I'm sure people push back on you. Oh, this is too much work. There's too much nitpicking. It's too little profits. But when you take it and you scale it up, the profits can be ridiculous, right? What do you say to people that say it's too much work? Well, I first have to explain to them that all this work can be done from your laptop. You know, you can be without a shirt at home. So why not start by that, right? Being comfortable. Then they have to get educated on the profit. The profit does not come from the front end when you make the sale. 
the profit comes from the back end where you get those gift cards, where you get that price match, where you get that cash back, where you get those coupons. So yeah, you can maybe only make two, three dollars when you make one sale and people don't see the profit there. They don't see the vision. But what if you're making three dollars in the front end and then ten dollars in the back with cash back, gift cards and coupons and price match? Now let's just say you're making ten dollars. What if you make ten dollars while you sleep? You know, and what if that you do that ten times? I mean, you wake up and you have a hundred dollars in profit and you haven't started your day. And then if you do this throughout the month, you make in, you know, ten thousand dollars in sales, twenty thousand dollars in sales at ten percent, that's an extra thousand dollars in your pocket from your home, making money while you sleep. So why not get educated and get in that in the field too? It's not for everyone, but 100%. Put your time in it, and it's it's not to replace your main income. It's not to replace your your job, but as a side hustle, you know, an extra thousand dollars can pay for your car payment. Well, you know, it's funny. I had a coaching client this morning, and he's not the type of guy who wants the flash. It's not him. Like he is a consistent worker. He's happy to make. He makes a good living, but he's happy to work that good living, like the two hundred k out for the next ten years to create the life that he wants forever. And so many times in life, especially with where we are, we're, we're so quick to get the quick buck or, or, or not put in the work. But this is truly a system that I know that technically I don't know much about it and I try to stay in my lane. But when I have the capital available, you know, I'm going to reach out to you and we're going to set something up because this is a side business that I can start with VAs or, or my right. assistant. My assistant, to be honest with you, would be a good, now that I'm thinking of it, I'm going to talk to him about doing this <laughs> with me. But what I'm saying is that this, like the way I look at it is this, here's the money, right? Let's say it's a thousand bucks. That's 12,000 bucks, a, you know, a thousand bucks a month, 12,000 bucks. You take that 12,000 bucks and you extend it over 10 years. And then that money buys you long-term assets, which is real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, that really that 12,000 bucks could turn into almost $300,000. I think that's what people don't understand. Yeah. It's, it's a long term. Yeah, for sure. And so what do you think is the hardest concept that when you're teaching somebody this new strategy, what do you think is the hardest thing for them to understand? The hardest thing for them to understand is that they have to grow slow. And that's, that's really hard because once you start making sales online, people get excited and they're like, Oh my God, I, I just made a sale. And they, they start listing more products and they start making more sales. The only thing is that Amazon, they keep an eye and they have algorithms on new accounts. So they have sales velocity checks. If you're a brand new seller and you go from zero to a thousand dollars in the first week, Amazon is gonna look at your account and be like, who is this guy? And then you keep making those sales, they're gonna start asking for paperwork. They're gonna start asking for, let's say some letters from the vendors that you're buying. Let's say you're selling Ryobi tools. So you need an approved letter from Ryobi saying that you're an authorized seller. And there's nothing wrong with drop shipping, but under Amazon terms and conditions, they said that you're allowed to trap ship as long as you don't have someone else's logo on the box. So if we trap ship from Home Depot and sometimes they do send the box from Home Depot or they send it from Ryobi, they're going to want to ask proof that you're an authorized seller for those items. Mm -hmm. Now, if you grow slow, Amazon is not going to do that. If you do a couple of sales the first uh, week, and then you increment your sales into the third, fourth week, Amazon's not gonna look at your account. Now, if the first 90 days is like your probation period. It's sure. where when the robots have eyes on your account. After those 90 days, you can scale really quick. So the hardest mm -hmm. thing is waiting that time period and grow slow because Amazon is having an eyes on, uh, having eyes on you, on your account. No, I love that. And that, you know what? That should be a rule in life. You have to wait 90 days for everything. <laughs> that, yeah. means that, that, means right. that, you, that means that you're truly committed. Now, mm -hmm. now what I want to do is I want to spend a minute or two just for pure my own enjoyment uh, on your travel stuff because that's really all I care about as well. What for you has been your favorite country that's not your home country? Where, where did you enjoy the most uh, time? I have two on my list. Okay. And the first one in Greece, I went to Santorini. Okay. And yeah, I love sunsets. So just being in the island, looking at the sunset, I mean, people are getting married, taking pictures. 
it was just amazing. I want to ask you a yeah. question before you go on to the second place. From Colombia, moved to America, 13, solid garage clicker and cars going 60 miles an hour and thought, what, what feeling did you have to know that you were in Santorini watching that sunset and know that you were making money from your laptop while traveling? Did, you, did that really hit you? Did it reflect yeah. on that you were constructing your life the way that you saw it? Mm-hmm. That just thinking about it gives me goosebumps because I remember being like in eighth grade in my geography class and we had to build the, the world map, right? We were divided in continents. And I remember working and built and just drawing Greece. And I, I thought about, you know, all those movies that you saw about Athens and the Roman Empire, everything like that. And I was like, when I got there, it took me back to my eighth grade. Um, me drawing that map and I realized like wow like now I'm here like Mm -hmm. that's insane Mm -hmm. and I just remember being a little kid like looking at planes and I was like how far can you go in a plane and and it was just it's it's the best feeling and I remember when I went back to my to my hometown I talked to my geography teacher and I was like just wanted to say thank you because I learned so much about the world there's so much more than just this small town and I was lucky enough to go there and I shared my experiences and she was super excited too. So it's a great feeling. There's something, you know, we were talking about this morning. There's something when you create a vision in your head or like something that you want and then you construct your life to to kind of get that vision. Mm -hmm. You truly understand that the only limitations that we set on ourselves are ourselves. And when you can do these things, every time that you do these things, you're, you know, you might not know this, but you're inspiring somebody else that may be 13 or, or 16 and stuff like that. And it, it, I would imagine that there's so much joy out of being able to go back to your hometown and, and tell them about Greece. And they probably, a lot of people have probably never left and, and stuff like that. So they see the pictures and I, I'm sure it's amazing. Yeah. I remember watching the movie, The Secret you know, the law of attraction and mm-hmm. your thoughts. And I really took the movie serious. I, I wrote my goals and I got a vision board. And I talked to my neighbor. This was maybe six, five or six years ago. And because I used to live with a couple of friends in an apartment complex and my neighbor, we were talking and I told her that my, my goal was to live by the beach and just make money online. And back in 2018, we were friends on Instagram and she messaged me after looking at all my posts and she was like, Oh my God, Christian, you're living what you told me like four years ago. And I had to take a moment to think back and I was living what I wanted to do from four years ago. So like I said, most people want results quick, but it's all about that vision in the long term. And it was just amazing. Yeah. No better feeling. So what's the place number two? Uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, so we got invited. Uh, not sure if I'm coming back. I'll let you know, I'll DM you. But, uh, so I turned 40 next year in December and, uh, we got invited to, uh, Sardinia, Italy for the, for the month of June. So we're going to go, we're going to go live in Sardinia, Italy, but we're going to go to, we're going to go rent a, a sailboat around the Greek isles. So wow. that's been my dream so trip. So that's like, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and, and because of technology and because of what we're doing right now and because of what we can do, this is obtainable for everybody. Like what you're doing, what I'm doing, you can invest in real estate if you have a team in place. And, and, and I really think that people are mistaken when they put their goals on dollar amounts. You obviously have to have a dollar amount, but I think it's more important that you as a person, um, create a goal of what you want your life to look like. And what I mean by that is I heard this in a mastermind. It's been my forever goal. One of my forever goals is I will, my, my entire goal to life is to be location independent. Mm, you can so be anywhere I, you want. Anywhere I want. Right. And we quantify our life around like this many units or this many things, but we don't quantify it. Of This is how much time I need. Mm-hmm. And like, wouldn't it be great to take off a month and then come back and you're rested and you're ready to work. Right. And, and so, you know, we're, we're such, like you said, this, this whole interview, we're such in a rush to get here. 
when this is a long life that, you know, if you take breaks and really sit down and write what your goals are, you know, then you can really map out the life that you've, that you've created and, and that, that hopefully everybody else can too. And I'm sure you heard a lot of times, it's not about the money, it's what money gives you, right? It's what you get from money, what the freedom that you get. And I have personal experiences. When I, when I went to, I deployed to the Middle East with the military as well. And I had a lot of money, but I didn't have the freedom to enjoy the money that I was making, right? Mm-hmm. And I was also nervous at night because at any time we could get attacked. So if you have money, but you can't sleep at night, if you have money and you can't do what you want to do with the money, then what is money good for? Then, you know, having the money and the freedom, for me, that, that's what success is, having money and the time and not, not trading time for money. Beautiful. Yeah. Because, because here's, this, here's the scenario. Let's say that you make 150 a year, right? But you can take 40 of it away and get all your time back. Who cares about the other 40? It doesn't matter. Yeah. You can't put a price tag on that and people have it twisted. They have it messed up. So what is what is the next 2 3 years look like for you? What are your what are your goals? What are you wanting to accomplish and and what do you see happening? I want to get into real estate here in the States. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm done. I'm almost done with my building in Colombia. Now I want to continue here in real estate. I'm, I'm working with Diego as well on that. So I want to own a, at least, I want to get at least one to two properties a year. I would say realistically, maybe one a year in the next two to three years. And Single after, family? I want to get a duplex uh, up to a fourplex. Mm-hmm. And... and would you turn that over to a property management company and really allow yourself to just be the yes. owner? Yeah. Yes. I, I want to be, I'm sure I'm, I won't be completely hands off, but I want to be as much hands off as possible. I, I just want to be able to say, I have a property here. It's been managed by these people and I'm collecting cash flow. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, how old are you? Yeah. I'm 30. You're 30. And yeah. What are your What do you and your parents talk about when they see your life now and like you know they sent you over to America at thirteen? What do they What do they say? That's a really good question because uh, growing up in a Hispanic community, Hispanic family, their goal is for for their kids to go to school, to go to university, to graduate, to get a good job, and then look for their retirement, right? So my my grandma was a, a teacher, school teacher. My mom, she also went to university. She went to school. And when I told them that I didn't want to continue to go to school because of what happened, taking, you know, three to four years in in college and then finding out that I couldn't take the exam, I I was really disappointed. And I told them that I was just going to focus on business. And at first they were like, no, that's that's not as secure, right? That's very risky. So they were looking for the security that a job offers you and that retirement in 20 years that you get. But I, I just love taking risks. I love doing business and I focus on it. And after, in 2017, my, my uncle got married in Colombia. And I, as a present, I took them to Cartagena. And I also took my mom, my dad, and my grandma. And I also took my aunt and my uncle because they're like my second family and their kids. So it was about 10 of us that I took to Cartagena and I I felt so good um, just because all the money that I used to pay for the things came from my online business. But the best feeling that I had was taking my dad in a plane for the first time. He was 54 years old, never been in a plane. So having my dad's uh, like reaction, like I'm sitting next to him and looking at his face flying for the first time, it was just, I couldn't describe that feeling. And then when we got to the water and he got into the ocean and he was so excited. First time in the, in the ocean too, in the beach, right? So those two things, flying my dad for the first time when he's 50 years old, taking him to the beach for the first time when he's 50 years old. I told my mom, this, this all came from my online business. And, and then she's like, wow, that's amazing. And I always told you to get a job. You know, I always told you to become an engineer, to become a doctor, to have a good degree. And I'm glad you found your passion. So all, all I say is that all you have to do is focus. First, you need to find something that you're passionate about and then focus your attention on that because the money will come and you'll get whatever you want with it. So, yeah. 
that. Dude, you're going to get me emotional over here, bro. That is <laughs> – no, because – because that's the things that you can do with money that matter way more than anything else. And in mm -hmm. the gift that you could give your dad in a scenario like that, and that you will continue to give them as you continue to go on is, is really what can propel you to, to great heights because you're, you're living for somebody else and, and then not living for what mm -hmm. you can get out of it. And, and, and the universe is going to reward you for that because you're, you're, you're choosing abundance over scarcity. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And especially here, a uh, few of my friends, they have like nice cars and stuff, but I've never been like materialistic. I remember just driving a Honda Civic and my friends, you know, they're driving Mercedes and BMW and they would always ask me, well, what's up with your car? You know, well, why don't you get a nice car if you have all this money? And I would just say that I love and I enjoy traveling better than having a car and I enjoy giving it to my family. And in 2018, I took my grandma as well to Mexico, to Mexico City, and then we went to Puerto Vallarta, and it, it was just amazing. My next goal is to take her to the Vatican because she's seen to church. I want to take her to um, the Vatican so she can maybe be in mass with the Pope, and then I want to take my aunt and my uncle to Chichen Itza, the, the pyramid in Mexico, because that's that's been her goal too. So my goal right now is to make my family's goal, uh, my family's dreams come true. Taking my, my grandma to the Vatican, taking my, my aunt and my uncle to Chichen Itza, the pyramid in Mexico, taking my mom and my dad to <clears throat> take them to Cancun because they never really had a honeymoon. So I want to take them to a Cancun to like an old paid hotel so that they can enjoy some time for themselves. So that's my main goal right now, having my, my family dreams come true. Yeah. They don't make them like you, brother. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm dead serious. Like, you know, like you're, you're that quote about making your family's dreams come true is really all it's about because you're, you're making the decision that they gave you the opportunity, right? Which was necessary. And it's, it's funny that you hit on the car thing because that's what I was going to talk about next. You know, I've noticed from, from Diego and from you, there's, you know, living with other people, not driving a fancy car. Like, we we're so quick to want the accolades before sacrificing to be able to afford them later on. And so, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that? Not long-term gratification because you're getting the travel. That's what you want. But like, how do you not deal with that outside pressure and just kind of stay on your path and not worry about how many people live with you in the house and you know, mm -hmm. how big of a house you have? Cause that shit doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it's a mental thing for me. It's a mental thing. You know, they, they can have nice cars, but if they have to make payments or if they're in debt to make those payments or if they live paycheck to paycheck to make those payments and I have that peace of mind that I have plenty of money in my bank, that I'm able to travel anywhere I want, whenever I want to, that I don't have a, a job, it, it, it just makes me feel better. And I don't worry about what other people drive or what other people think about me because at the end of the day, uh, I, I don't have to worry about it. I have that peace of mind. I can, I can do whatever I want whenever I want to. Yeah. Amazing. And how do people find out about you? How do they get in contact with you if they want to, if they want to meet you? Probably the easiest way is Instagram. And if anyone's around Sacramento area, we can do a local meetup, maybe grab some coffee. I know with the pandemic, it's a little bit different now, but yeah, I, I met with people from Reno. I had a guy that just, drove from Reno here just to meet up with me and have a chat. And I'm also available on the phone or Instagram whenever I'll be going to Nashville, Tennessee. I'll be going to Austin, Texas as well soon. So if anyone's around, well, we can, when yeah. you come, well, what, no, when you come to Austin, we're going to do a meetup with Diego and you. So I'll yeah. set it, I'll set everything up. I'll have a bunch of people there. We have, we actually have one this weekend that we're putting on. Oh, nice. So, yeah, but, but yeah, so I just want to say this, like, I'm very glad that he introduced us. I'm very glad about who you are as a human. The business stuff is just a, a product of how good you are as a human. And I just want to thank you so much uh, for, for coming on and sharing your story. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me here. It was Got fun. it, guys. And if you like this episode, make sure you share it with your friends, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.
Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.